Alright, hi guys and welcome to weekly writing and reading vlog number whatever it is. Today I just wanted to update you with my reading. So I finished reading Babies by Anne Enright. Now, surprisingly, I actually enjoyed this, which... You know, babies are not my thing at all. I, I don't like babies, I know nothing about babies, and I'm pretty happy with it, with that state of affairs. But it was interesting to read, obviously from a woman's point of view, uh, about childbirth, about pregnancy, about the changes that go on in your body, and so on and so forth. And also I think it dealt nicely with society's reaction to mothers and motherhood and new mothers as well so all in all thought it was pretty enjoyable i'll give it a 3.5 out of 5 because i mean i can't give it any higher than that because of the enjoyment that i got out of it but you know it was better than i was expecting so uh yeah definitely check that out if you're interested and now i'm reading a sense of reality by graham green which is uh four short stories and he's one of my favorite and also most read authors but i haven't read these ones before so i'm very excited so i'm gonna go and read some more of that now okay goodbye so i'm, I'm watching the may cave and hey megan and, go and, go and i made uh Bye. this is tofu with like ginger and chili and some other bits. Hi, hi, uh, I'm Merlin, Daniel's friend. Hey Merlin. I made onion bargies. And I'm watching Wisecrack talk about the philosophy of the haunting of Hill House. Majestic cat is being majestic. Aren't you Biggie? What are you up to there? Are you giving yourself a little bit of a lick? Yes. Everybody on the internet wants to do this to you, Biggie. I haven't kept you up to date with my cooking today. Here is the remains of a salad I made. It also had stuffed vine leaves in it, which was uh, the vine leaves were the highlight. I have uh, some, this is like tofu scramble hurt there. And here, this is a persimmon. I've never had a persimmon before, so I'm going to give it a go. All right, here goes. Let's give this a try. I don't, I don't know what this is going to even. I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. But I'd say that's like a cross between a melon and a pear. Yo, please excuse me for randomly having my sleeve rolled up. Uh, I've just put some coconut oil on my tattoo because it's still healing. It's pretty itchy. I, I'll give you another look at it. There we go. There we go. See, it's looking a lot better now that the redness has gone down and you can, you know, see the colours and the contrast. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's actually currently 20 to 1 in the morning. Uh, I, I just haven't updated today. I've actually been doing loads of work. I've done about four and a half hours of ghostwriting on a uh, client's book, which is good. Uh, I've been variously productive other than that as well. Had a bit of a tidy. Um, I've started making some sourdough. So you have to get like... I've forgotten what it's called now, but basically you have to mix equal parts of uh, flour and water together in a bowl, mix it all together, and then you leave it for a few days, and then you start adding a little bit more flour, a little bit more water each day until you get the required consistency, and then you basically have this like sourdough culture. It's really interesting because apparently, basically ev like everything has like background amounts of yeast in or whatever, so you don't need to put any yeast in it because the yeast in the flour after the period of two, three days or whatever starts to ferment, etc. anyway. So, what am I doing? I finished reading A Sense of Reality by Graham Greene. Cracking book, really enjoyed this actually. It's just four short stories. The first one, Under the Garden, took up about two thirds of the book and was probably the best one, but all four of them were good. I gave it a four out of five, which is fairly unusual for a short story collection. I mean, admittedly, he is one of my favorite authors, but at the same time, one of the reasons why I really enjoyed reading this is that it wasn't really like the rest of his work. It wasn't really typical of Graham Greene, so that made it kind of interesting. I then read Electric Dreams, the collected works of Jim or Paint It. Uh, so this is basically, Jim or Paint It, if you haven't seen him, is on Facebook and he makes things in Microsoft Paint responding to people's requests. I think I gave this, uh... do you know what? This is probably a five out of five. It, it did tickle me, I really enjoyed it. You know, as long as you know what, you know what, you, what it is, you know, going into it, you're gonna enjoy it. Here are some chili and garlic olives that I'm going to put snack on, even though I don't like olives, but I'm trying to train myself to like them, so you know. And I've started reading Kirk Black Sandblaster and the Ice Pirates of Law by Ollie Jacobs. So this is for Todd and Danes, and you read along for uh, December. 
and uh, Jacobs is a Wickham author. I actually have, I've read a few of his books before, but I have three in this Kirk Sandblaster series. It's kind of like sci-fi humour, a bit reminiscent of Douglas Adams, but possibly with kind of harder sci-fi and probably harder humour, to be honest. Now, I am really enjoying it. There are quite a few apostrophe mistakes, though, so I've been flagging them. These are all the apostrophe mistakes I've found so far. But, uh, I mean, it's an indie book, so you can forgive it. And that's about it, really. Yesterday I went to the open mic, got fairly drunk, but it was a good evening. Uh, I didn't get any footage of me playing, but I shared some of some of the other acts and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, tomorrow I'm on the radio, so how exciting. All right, and anyway, on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you, because I'm going to go do some more work and eat some olives. All right, bye-bye. Oh, and I'm watching this guy do magic. I've been watching people on bloody Netflix do magic for six and a half hours. Read you collectively. What I want you to do is each think of somebody that you... This one is Death by Magic. I'm watching more magic on Netflix, and also I've made this banging looking stir fry. It's ready to dish up. Also, I'm boiling a potato here to make vegan mayo. I have no idea if it's going to work, but whatevs. All right, let's serve. What is up, Biggie? What's happening? Okay. Yeah. What? Well, why? Why though? Why though? If I give you another pouch, are you going to throw it all over the floor again? Okay. I'll take that as a no. Go on then. He's been a bit of a meower. What is it, Biggie? What you got there? Come on, give it a little, give it a little bop. Come on, bop it. I'm not going to bop it for you. Go on. Oh, okay. I see what we're doing. Go on, get it. Where's the ball? Get the ball. Hello! Oh god, it is uh, Thursday. I'm very sorry, I've, I've fallen off the ball a little bit with my uh, uh, weekly reading vlog, so I'm probably going to combine this into two weeks worth. To be honest, I don't know, I've lost my uh, booktube mojo a little bit. I'm still really enjoying watching it. I've, I've said this probably for like the last three to six months now. I'm actually, I enjoy watching it more than I enjoy creating it, but I'm still going to keep giving it a go because I want to be a part of this community. It's a nice place to be. So uh, let me think, I can't even remember when I last updated you, so I will go back to, uh, let's see, what did I do at the weekend? Um, nope, don't know. Oh, weekend, actually, a weekend, I had a productive weekend, uh, particularly on Sunday, I spent most of Sunday cooking and tidying and cleaning, I need to tidy and clean again, standard. Uh, and also, actually, I worked over the weekend, because Monday, I took Monday off, I was supposed to have a driving lesson, but my driving instructor had to go to the dentist, so he rescheduled. And then I went into London to, I, I went on a date, I went on a date, so I went into London to get vegan food and uh, to meet someone's cats, which is pretty, pretty good, that works for me. Uh, Tuesday, what happened on Tuesday? It was another open mic night at the Chilton Taps. So I went there and played some songs for my friend Dave. Yesterday was Wednesday, uh, again, work for most of the day. And then I played Zelda in the evening, A Link to the Past, because I couldn't sleep and my sleep is kind of screwed. That brings us up today, which is Thursday. And uh, I woke up pretty late today, um, but I am cracking on with it. I'm actually going to try and do some filming and editing today and also getting my house into gear because the weekend is mental. Tomorrow night is open mic night at the Art Centre, which I'm hosting. Saturday, me and my friend, uh, uh, my friend Dave, we've got a gig at uh, the Anchor in Maidenhead here in the UK, uh, Berkshire, which... Um, so we are we are called the Ilk, and we're just going to play pop covers basically. We're, we're playing two 45-minute sets and getting paid in petrol money, beer, and orange juice, which I'm I'm down for. Uh, and then Sunday there's another open mic at the Bell in Prince's Risborough, which I'm probably going to go to because it's once a month. And last time I went, I left my rucksack there. So that is the socialising bit done. Cat is still around, just chilling. Uh, so in terms of books, I'm going to update you on some books. So I can't remember whether I uh, talked about this one, which is Language by Xiaolo Guo, something like that. 
basically this is um, let me find you the excerpt I was reading some excerpts from my friend it's um, uh, a Chinese lady who came to the UK and didn't speak great English so she's learning as she goes and it's all written in that kind of vernacular so uh, here we go here's the paragraph I liked Night long and lonely, staying nervously in tacky room. London should be like Emperor's City, but I cannot feel it. Noise coming from other room, laughing in drunkenly way. Upstairs, TV news, speaking intensely nonsense. Often the man shouting like mad in the street. I worry. I worry I'm getting lost and nobody in China can find me anymore. How I finding important places including Buckingham Palace or Big Stupid Clock? I looking everywhere but not seeing big posters of David Beckham, Spicy Girls or President Margaret Thatcher. In China we hanging them everywhere. English person not respect their heroes or what? So I like the way it's written and um, yeah it's actually really fascinating. I probably would. So this is selected from a book called A Concise Chinese to English Dictionary for Lovers. And uh, she does meet a chap in this. And uh, I mean I'm not big on romance but what was actually interesting was it focused I guess. It did have the romance element in it but it also included like the cultural differences. So this guy's a vegetarian, for example, and she's like, where is where is your meat? So I read that. We've got a few more of these. Let's go on to this, this vintage mini. This is Psychedelics by Aldous Huxley. So, uh, oh, sorry, the uh, language, I'm gonna give that a 4.5 out of five. Psychedelics by Aldous Huxley, one out of five. And do you wanna know why? Because I'm a Huxley fan. So I was really excited about this. I was like, yeah, this is going to be really cool. It's going to have like some of his essays and some of his various writing and stuff. No, it's literally the unabridged text of the Doors of Perception. So it's just the Doors of Perception with a different name. But I've read the Doors of Perception like multiple times. So now I pick this up, getting really excited. And as soon as... Uh, uh, so yeah, basically I, I didn't actually read it because I've already read it. But I was a bit disappointed with that. Uh, and then we have Work by Joseph Heller. This is another 4.5 out of 5, actually. This is excerpts from something called Something Happened. So Heller's obviously well known for Catch-22. But uh, in this one, basically, it follows the story of a guy who works in, like, an ad agency. And it's all the kind of office politics and rivalries and bitchiness and all this and all that. And as someone who used to work in an office, I can relate to that quite a lot. It's just very well written, very entertaining. And I definitely want to read Something Happened now. I might actually pick that up before Catch-22. Because I know a lot of people have kind of struggled with Catch-22. Whereas this was just a joy to read. And it was hilarious as well. Like... You got moments where he gets called into a meeting with one boss and the boss is like, have you heard any rumours that I might be getting fired? And he's like, no. And then he gets called into a meeting with another boss and the other boss is like, have you heard any rumours I might be getting fired? And he's like, no. And then he gets called into a meeting with the overall boss and the boss is like, yeah, we're going to fire one of those two guys. Do you want to take either of their jobs? <laughs> so, uh... There's some great quotes. Actually, there's one on the back here, which is one that stood out to me when I was reading it, which is, in every company today, there is at least one person who is going crazy slowly. And uh, at my old company, that was me. Okay, I also read uh, this one, which is How to Be a Pirate by Cressida Cowell. So this is one of the How to Train Your Dragon books. I've just been picking these up in charity shops whenever I can get the chance, really. Uh, I've been enjoying all of these ones. This one actually... Probably a four out of five is one of the better ones, I think. Not, I don't think I'm going to give any of them like a five out of five unless they randomly, you know, blow my mind. But they are just enjoyable, quick reads. And um, in this one, basically, uh, Alvin the poor but honest farmer comes along. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I've read the later books, so I know that he was actually Alvin the treacherous. But whatever. And, uh, yeah, they go finding some treasure. Hiccup and fish legs end up in, like, a cave under the water. And, uh, yeah, I'll read you the quick blurb here. Can Hiccup find Grimbeard the Ghastly's treasure before Alvin the Treacherous gets his sneaky hands on it? And if Hiccup opens a box that says, do not open, will he live to tell the tale? Spoiler alert, all of these books are written as though they're the memoirs of Hiccup as an old man. So you always know he's not going to die, but still. All right, and here we have Kirk Sandblaster Faces Tetrageddon by Ollie Jacobs. So this is the third of the three Kirk Sandblaster books so far that I've read. I know there are one or two others. They're all actually just super enjoyable, kind of zany sci-fi. In this one, basically uh, Tetras are the universal currency, and uh, Kirk Sandblaster won the game of Laria, I think. I think that's what it's called, and uh, won loads of money from it. That actually happens in one of the other books, which I haven't read. Laurier, I think it might be called actually and anyway he goes to spend some money and he finds his bank account's been frozen so he goes to like the head office of the main bank and they basically send him inside to be like what's going on something weird's happening and like the AI's misbehaving there's a pretty cool AI in this called Cora I believe she's called and um, 
yeah, it's just a, a rip-roaring adventure, and it's what's cool about this one is you don't really know what's going on. And in terms of actually, uh, like the world building and stuff in it is great, especially for an indie book. And this one, I think the first one that I read had a few like uh, apostrophe mistakes and stuff. This one, none that I picked up on. I'll give it a pretty solid four out of five. And um, I would recommend this series actually, especially if you like sci-fi humour and or sci-fi humour. It's a bit like what Terry Pratchett would write if he wrote sci-fi instead of fantasy, I think. And uh, yeah, I, I just thought it was great. And um, the idea of them going into this bank as well, it just reminded me of uh, Harry Potter when they go in. And <laughs> I think it's like the last book or whatever where they raid uh, Gringotts or whatever. It was really cool. I, I definitely enjoy it. Yeah, cool, cool art. Pretty good for an indie novel, I must say. I mean, I would, I would say... I could see these books being published, maybe not by like Penguin Random House or something, but definitely by like a specialist publisher. They're, they're, they don't need much editing, they need some copy editing at best. They're very fun, very enjoyable, definitely check them out. Alright, so that's where I'm at now, and then I'm currently reading over here, because I'm cracking on with these vintage mini moderns, you see. So I'm currently reading Fatherhood by Karl Ove Nausgaard. Now, what I think is a kind of interesting here is that there was one on motherhood, which I really enjoyed, and then this one on fatherhood is really dull. But I think the reason for that is the motherhood one talks a lot about what it's like to be pregnant, what it's like to give birth, and all this stuff like, like it's pretty detailed to be honest. <laughs> so uh, like, I mean I'm not, I'm not a father, but um, you know, I'm also not a woman. I, I don't know, I just found it really interesting and it was like, you know when you read a book and you see things from a different point of view and uh, that's what I got from it and because of that I really enjoyed it. Uh, but the fatherhood one is literally just this guy talking about his kids growing up and they're like five or six years old or whatever and I'm just like, I don't care, I really don't care about your children, I'm sorry, I don't, I just don't like children. So yeah, anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna go and do some hoovering later. I might do some, some more Zelda in a bit as well, so if I do, I will uh, share a clip of that. Oh, and I'm watching Cam from Wolf so Wolfshot Publishing talk about uh, Booktube-sponsored videos and stuff, so I'll go back to that, lovely. Bullshitting, you know? So yeah, I'm cool with Bullshitting. What are you meowing for? Uh, we're gonna leave some pieces out using a clear. Well, I know it's two colors, so I just really- I've got vine leaves. My friend says they look like tiny turds, but they're nice. Look who's here! Yeah? Saturday, isn't it, Biggie? How are you doing today? We're watching some vegan people. I'm off uh, to perform shortly. Thanks, Kat. Oh yeah, I got my vegan kind snack box, so he's he's been enjoying investigating. What's that you found there? It's like fruit crisps, Biggie. Oh, I got pinged. Quick reading update. Um, I read uh, Persona Non Grata, which is published by Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. So this was sent to me by Isabel Kenyon, who runs the press. She's also the editor on this. And uh, she also published an, another anthology called Please Hear What I'm Not Saying. That previous one was in, in aid of uh, Mind, which is a mental health charity. This one is in aid of Shelter, which is for homelessness. And basically it's just a collection of poetry on the theme of kind of People who are outsiders, you know, uh, people who who uh, society looks down upon, like homeless people and refugees and asylum seekers and all that kind of stuff. Very good. I will gave I gave it a four out of five. Some of the poems are better than others, but you expect that in an anthology. I have a little bit of a spot here. And then after that, I read The Red Tree by Sean Tan. So this is like a mixture between a, a graphic novel and a poem, I guess. I'll read you a little bit of it. I'll give you a little bit of a flick through. Sometimes the day begins with nothing to look forward to. And things go from bad to worse. Darkness overcomes you. Nobody understands. The world is a deaf machine. I'm not going to read the whole thing because, you know. But what are you sitting on there? Okay, you can sit on that one. And now I am reading Eating by Nigella Lawson. So this is kind of her thoughts on cooking, basically. But the problem that I have is that so far, she's just been talking about cooking meat. And even then, after the meat, she was like, right, here's how to make some mayo. And I'm like, well, I'm vegan, pal. Give me something that I can at least veganize. So yeah. But um, it's alright so far. And like I say, today, this evening I have a gig. My friend Dave has actually just messaged me back about the set list saying, piece of piss. 
which is good because I think that means we're good. And uh, we're getting paid petrol money and also getting free beer. So, well, I'm getting free beer. He's getting free orange juice because he's driving. Lol. So, yeah, let's let's head off. It's Tony D. Them elaborate lengthy statements just demonstrating that though it might be entertaining, them steps lead nowhere. Your salves are trapped in the Escher painting. Oh. Art references. <laughs> oh, what up, what up, what up? It's uh, Thursday. I did that thing again where I forgot to film. Uh, I've actually, I've not been having a great mental health time, to be honest, over the last couple of days. So that's kind of why. Uh, feeling a little bit better today. Is it me? Or does it look as though that van does not look like it should be parked like that? Why is it at that angle? Um, I'm going home tomorrow for Christmas, but I'm, I'm going to be back. I'm going to be home alone with the cat on Christmas Day. So uh, actually, I did find a, a recipe for like a one tray vegan Christmas dinner meal. So I'm probably going to do that and possibly work. Uh, so that'll be fun. But um my mum's got a new boyfriend, so she's seeing him, and uh, I don't really want to stay at my dad's house, so... Uh, I've been doing some more reading, though. I have finished, I finished reading these two. I read uh, Summer by Laurie Lee, which was incredibly boring. It's e excerpts from Cider with Rosie, which is actually quite highly acclaimed. But I shall not be reading it, because... Yeah, it was just really, really dull. I gave it a 2.5. I can't even really remember any of it. The, oh, no, I gave it a 2 out of 5. The only bits that I did like, I did think there were some beautiful lines. Like, there were some really good quotes from it. But the actual book itself, Jesus Christ, is so bored. Uh, and then Eating by Nigella Lawson, which I gave a 3 out of 5. I actually thought this was pretty good and pretty well written. And uh, you can definitely tell she's passionate about food. Some of the analogies she used were great as well. Basically, everything was meat or animal products based. So there were, I think there were two recipes that I could maybe veganize. And even then, it was for like a vinaigrette or something. So it's like, well, I'll just... Uh, so, um, so yeah, so there, I was reading like 20 pages at a time about how to cook a chicken. I'm like, I haven't, I haven't eaten chicken for 15 years, love. So, um, so there's that. And now I am reading Dragons at Crumbling Castle by Terry Pratchett, which basically loads of little short stories. One of them was actually about the carpet people, which was uh, a, a novel he wrote. He wrote it when he was 17 and then rewrote it when he was like 40. Uh, and, and, and this story was like an introduction to it. None of these are particularly themed. None of them are set on the disc world or anything. They're just humorous fantasy short stories, kind of middle gradey. And uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. So uh, yeah, should should finish it soonish, I hope. So that's where we're up to. I'm gonna end this reading vlog here for now because then I can pick up with my trip to Tamworth and Christmas and all that and whatnot. Plus this has been like two and a half weeks and I was gonna do these once a week, but it's gone a bit tits up. Um, trying to catch up on uh, booktube stuff as well, so I will do that soon. Sorry if I haven't replied to your comments. I do read them. I just don't respond to them straight away because it's very time consuming and I've not got much time. I'm, I've got so much work to do. I have to pack all of my stuff. I haven't cleaned my house or packed my stuff and I have to go home tomorrow. I've only just woken up and it's like 3.30 p.m. Anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.